Launching humans into space is one of the most challenging feats in spaceflight, but bringing them back safely is even harder. For Boeing's Starliner, returning astronauts to Earth isn't just difficult, it's currently impossible. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Dragon has been doing it flawlessly for five years, even stepping in to rescue stranded NASA astronauts when needed. More than just a safe return, Dragon offers a unique and unforgettable journey back to Earth, one unlike any other spacecraft. So what makes Dragon so reliable? And how do NASA astronauts feel about their return trip aboard this vehicle? Let's break it all down in today's episode of TechMap. Splashdown landings have long been a staple of American spaceflight, dating back to the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs. This tried-and-true method ensured astronauts could return safely to Earth using parachutes and ocean landings. However, in the early days of Dragon development, SpaceX had a very different plan in mind. Instead of relying on parachutes, they originally aimed to land their spacecraft using Dragon's eight Super Draco thrusters in a controlled propulsive landing. This ambitious approach was eventually abandoned due to safety concerns. NASA played a pivotal role in this decision. Shortly after SpaceX secured the Commercial Crew Program contract, the agency strongly advocated for parachute-assisted splashdowns. Their reasoning was simple. This method had already been extensively tested, proving its reliability and simplicity. Additionally, NASA favored this approach because it suited the geography of American launch sites, which are mostly near coastlines. The ocean provides vast, obstacle-free recovery zones, making it far more convenient than attempting land-based retrievals. Over the past five years, SpaceX has successfully brought back 10 NASA crews, using this well-established landing method. But what exactly makes a Dragon splashdown work so flawlessly? The answer lies in the seamless coordination of several critical systems, each playing a vital role in ensuring a safe return. The first and most crucial barrier protecting the spacecraft during re-entry is its heat shield. Specifically, Dragon 2 uses the Pika-X, phenolic impregnated carbon ablator heat shield, an advanced material designed to endure the intense heat generated when returning to Earth. As the spacecraft hurtles through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, friction with air molecules creates immense temperatures, potentially reaching thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. Without protection, this heat would be catastrophic. The Pika-X shield works through a process called ablation, where its outer layers burn away in a controlled manner, carrying heat away from the capsule and preventing it from reaching the crew and delicate onboard systems. This ablative shielding is a game-changer, showcasing the importance of cutting-edge, materials science in the design of spacecraft that must withstand the punishing conditions of atmospheric re-entry. Without it, returning from orbit would be impossible. Once the spacecraft safely makes it through the fiery ordeal of re-entry, the next challenge is slowing down from orbital speeds of around 17,500 miles per hour to a safe splashdown velocity. This is where Dragon's sophisticated parachute system takes over. Designed with multiple layers of redundancy, this system includes drogue parachutes and main parachutes, each playing a crucial role in slowing and stabilizing the capsule. At about 18,000 feet, two small drogue parachutes deploy while the spacecraft is still moving at roughly 350 miles per hour. These chutes act as stabilizers ensuring the capsule maintains the correct orientation as it descends. At around 6,000 feet, the four much larger main parachutes deploy, further reducing the descent speed to a much safer 119 miles per hour before the final splashdown. This carefully sequenced parachute deployment isn't just about slowing the spacecraft down, it's about safety. The inclusion of six parachutes, two drogues and four mains highlights the emphasis on safety and reliability in Dragon's design. Every component is rigorously tested to meet NASA's human-rated standards, ensuring astronauts have the best possible chance of a smooth return. 
Once the Dragon capsule safely lands in the ocean, recovery operations kick into high gear. Designed with buoyancy in mind, the spacecraft remains afloat thanks to its airtight construction, preventing water from seeping in. But floating isn't enough. The crew still needs to be retrieved as quickly as possible. That's where the highly trained SpaceX recovery team comes in. Their process unfolds in several key steps. First, fast boats rush to the splashdown site, securing the capsule and checking its condition. Second, a larger recovery ship moves into position, equipped with cranes and lifting equipment to carefully hoist the capsule out of the water. Third, once aboard, the astronauts receive immediate medical evaluations to ensure their well-being after their journey back from space. This carefully orchestrated process is designed to minimize the time astronauts spend in the capsule post-landing, ensuring a smooth transition from space to sea to solid ground. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft has proven itself as a reliable, safe, and efficient vehicle for human spaceflight. Every successful splashdown is a testament to the rigorous engineering, innovative materials, and meticulous planning that go into each mission. From the extreme heat of re-entry to the precision of the parachute system and the swift execution of recovery operations, every stage of Dragon's return showcases the brilliance of modern spaceflight technology. With more missions on the horizon, SpaceX continues to refine and improve upon this process, ensuring that splashdowns remain a dependable method for bringing astronauts home. The future of space travel is unfolding before our eyes, and Dragon's story is far from over. For many NASA astronauts, returning to Earth aboard Dragon is more than just a transition from space to home. It's a visceral, unforgettable experience. The intense ride through the atmosphere, the violent jolts of parachute deployment, and the final plunge into the ocean create a sequence of sensations unlike anything else in human spaceflight. NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley, who flew the historic Demo-2 mission in 2020, vividly described what it was like to re-enter the atmosphere aboard Dragon Endeavour. The atmosphere makes noise. You can start to hear that rumble outside the vehicle, Benkin recalled. It sounds like an animal going through the atmosphere, with all the puffs and the atmospheric noise. It continues to gain magnitude as you descend through the atmosphere. For Benkin and Hurley, the return was a wild ride. The separation of the crew service trunk before re-entry felt like being hit in the back of a chair with a baseball bat, a crack, as Benkin put it. The parachute deployment? That came with a significant jolt. Then, just before splashdown, they could feel the impact of the ocean before waves splashed over their windows. More recently, NASA astronaut Nick Haig, part of the Crew-9 mission in March 2025, had a more concise yet equally telling remark upon splashdown, what a ride. But Crew-9 wasn't just another mission, it was a rescue operation for Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore, NASA astronauts who had been stranded on the International Space Station due to technical issues with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. When Haig, Williams, Wilmore, and Roscosmos, cosmonaut Alexander Gorbunov, climbed out of Dragon after splashdown. Reports indicated they were grinning ear to ear. After months in space, their return to Earth was not only a relief, but also a testament to Dragon's proven reliability in bringing astronauts home safely. One of the biggest advantages of ocean splashdowns is the gentler deceleration compared to landing on solid ground. Water acts as a natural cushion, absorbing much of the impact that would otherwise be transmitted to the spacecraft and crew. This means astronauts experience less physical stress upon landing, making the return from space more comfortable than a hard surface landing. Additionally, splashdowns simplify spacecraft design by eliminating the need for landing gear, airbags, or braking systems all of which add weight and complexity. The coastal location of U.S. launch sites also makes ocean landings a practical and logistically efficient choice, 
Launch trajectories extend over water, so splashdowns naturally align with existing flight paths. The vastness of the ocean provides large recovery zones, reducing the risk of missing the landing target or endangering populated areas. Furthermore, landing in water can reduce structural stress on the spacecraft compared to a land-based impact. After enduring the intense heat and speed of re-entry, a splashdown in the ocean presents less risk of damage, improving the chances of reusing the capsule for future missions. Despite its advantages, splashdown isn't without challenges. One of the biggest concerns is exposure to saltwater, which is highly corrosive and can degrade spacecraft components over time. This necessitates thorough post-landing inspections and maintenance, especially for reusable capsules like Dragon. Ocean recovery is also heavily weather-dependent. Rough seas, high winds, or storms can delay retrieval operations or make recovery more difficult. There's even the risk of the capsule capsizing or taking on water while awaiting pickup, which adds an additional layer of complexity. Compared to land-based landings, splashdowns also lack precision. While the vast ocean provides a large target area, landing in an exact location is more challenging, potentially complicating recovery efforts. Additionally, Astronauts returning from microgravity may experience seasickness due to the motion of the waves immediately after splashdown. Despite these drawbacks, SpaceX and NASA have continued refining the splashdown process, making it a safe and effective way to return astronauts to Earth. SpaceX's decision to use ocean splashdowns contrasts sharply with the approach taken by Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, which is designed to land on solid ground. Instead of a water landing, Starliner touches down at designated sites, such as White Sands Space Harbor in New Mexico. While Starliner and Dragon share similar parachute deployment sequences, with Drogue parachutes followed by larger main chutes, the final phase of landing is where they differ most. Unlike Dragon, which relies on water impact to soften the landing, Starliner deploys six large airbags just before touchdown. These inflatable landing bags act as shock absorbers, cushioning the spacecraft as it makes contact with the ground. This approach eliminates the logistical challenges of ocean recovery, but introduces its own set of risks, such as harder impacts, the need for precise ground landing sites, and potential issues with airbag deployment. Each method has its trade-offs. Starliner's land-based landing reduces exposure to saltwater corrosion, and allows for faster access to astronauts post-landing. However, it also introduces greater impact forces, requiring additional structural reinforcements that add weight and complexity. On the other hand, Dragon's splashdown system simplifies design, provides gentler landings, and aligns well with NASA's historical approach to crewed spacecraft recovery. As human spaceflight continues to evolve, so will landing technologies. While SpaceX and NASA have refined splashdown landings, advancements in propulsive landing technologies, such as those originally envisioned for Dragon, could reshape how future spacecraft return to Earth. For now, splashdowns remain the preferred and proven method for SpaceX's Dragon. The continued success of these landings highlights the balance between simplicity, safety, and reliability a balance that has ensured the safe return of astronauts time and time again. But as technology progresses, could we see a future where splashdowns are replaced entirely? Or will they remain a staple of crewed spaceflight for years to come? One thing is certain, bringing astronauts home safely will always be the top priority, no matter how they land.